How many of you have been victims of what I call network drive-bys? <laughs> Somebody drive, yeah, hands going up. Somebody drives by, fire out, fires out the request, sucks the life out of you, and when you need something, they what? Don't return your phone call, right? Here's my message for you this morning. Stop networking and start net worthing. Because net worthing is when we stand at the intersection of life and look for ways to connect people, opportunities, and ideas. Net worthing is not about you. It's about them. It's about them. It's looking for ways to be a resource to people, looking ways to bring value to your network. And when you bring that value, when you communicate that value, your net worth goes up. And there's never been a better time than right now to be building your net worth. Within five minutes, my cell phone rang. It was, he introduced himself as Harvey, said, I understand we got a little situation going on. What can I do? And I said, I need to get to the on-call radiologist. He said, uh, uh -huh. I know that guy well. He owes me. Uh, that's really what he said. He said, how quick can you get back to the, uh, how quick can you get to the hospital, actually? And I, 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 I'm in my car. I, I called my husband, who, by the way, was following me in his car. And he's seen me on the phone. And then he sees me do, like, this U-turn. <laughs> And I'm just like, come on, you know. So we go down there, we meet with the radiologist. He answers the two questions that I had, the 122 questions my husband had. Did I mention my husband's a shrink? <laughs> that radiologist is still in therapy, but. Anyways, the radiologist said, you're gonna have to find a vascular surgeon who's gonna have to biopsy this. We don't know for sure what it is. So I get on this vascular surgeon's schedule for Wednesday to have this biopsy. Tuesday night, 4.30, the phone rings, and it's the receptionist. I'm so sorry to call and tell you this, but um, you just been bumped off the surgery schedule. Um, um, due to an open heart case, they took precedent over your um, tumor. So, um, hey, relax. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, we don't do these surgeries only like once a week, so it'll be another week before we can get you in. Um, but we'll talk, to you. we'll talk to you next week. That didn't work for me, once again. At, I, right, at the kitchen table, I looked at Fred and I thought, okay, who do we know? Who do we know? Who do we know? Connect the dots. And I'm thinking, vascular surgeons. Now, I don't know about you, but you know, I don't play bridge with those people. I mean, <laughs> I don't know one. I've never met one. I don't even know what they look like. I mean, I didn't know anybody like that. If you're looking for a speaker who will focus on the real reason people come to meetings and conferences, to expand their network and make new connections, then you want Sarah Michelle. When I say go, you are going to stand up. You are going to start to walk around and feel free to stand in the chairs and go, I have a three, who's got a three, okay? That's allowed. They tell me you're kind of a rowdy group, so I'm expecting that. Um, so you're gonna be looking for somebody who's got the dots on one side or the other. When you connect. So right now we're doing the uh, network intention, connecting the dots exercise. So people have discovered or figured out what their intention is what they want to have happen at this conference, and also how they could be a resource to somebody here at this conference. And they have a domino, and they're out there connecting the dots, and they're making connections happen, and this is the kickoff of a three-day conference, and they're gonna wear in their badge holders for the rest of the conference. What's gonna be sticking out behind their badge holder is how they could be a resource to you, which facilitates connections, and that's why people come to conferences, is why they come to conventions, is for the networking, for the connections, and we're facilitating it, putting it on steroids, and the connections are going to happen throughout the next three days that are going to be amazing. Sarah Michelle is a certified speaking professional, awarded by the National Speakers Association for her ability to consistently deliver her message with high energy, humor, and inspiration, which motivates audiences to take action. Who was uh, most likely to succeed? Anybody get that? Oh, right there. Um, do we have a most foxy? <laughs> Some of you remember the 70s, right? That, that was the category, most foxy. Well, my unsophisticated classmates 30 years ago didn't realize I wasn't gossiping. I was networking! <laughs> Her programs are highly interactive, using creative metaphors and exercises, such as the domino effect. The most powerful thing that I give my audiences and that what I hear from them months later has made the most impact is when you can practice what I call intentional connecting. And so I want to talk to you about that today and then give you a chance to do it. A couple months ago, I was speaking at a Women in Business conference in Denver. And I finished speaking, and I had to pack up my stuff. And by the time I got into the ballroom, 
the luncheon was already in progress. Matter of fact, they were going on to the second course. I, I scanned the room. It was crowded, like a conference like this. I saw one seat open. That's all that was left about 20 feet away. I ran over, grabbed it, sat down, never wanted to miss a free meal, and uh, <laughs> began to dig in. And I started to kind of look around the room. The woman had already met at my table. It was like this, table of 10. And I'm starting to look at the name tags and nodding. And, and I get over here, and the woman right next to me, I read her name tag. And all of a sudden, I went, Dr. Diane Stone! And I screamed it pretty much that loud. And she looked at me and said, yes? I said, don't you remember me? You delivered my first daughter 14 years ago here in Denver. <laughs> no, I I'm sorry. Uh, I don't remember you. Now, this busy OBGYN has delivered a lot of Baby, seen a lot of women in 14 years, and she really had no clue who I was. But she said, you know, tell me something about you that will, you know, trigger my memory about your delivery. I thought for a minute. <laughs> I have a note, and I want drugs now! <laughs> oh, yes, I do remember you. You're the drug note lady. We laughed about you for years. You see what, um, what happened? This was my first baby. And what happened was I uh, was going in and out of labor for about four days. And when I, I, they made me come see her at, the, at, the, at her clinic before I could go to the hospital because I kept showing up. And the ER was like, if she shows up one more time, not in labor. <laughs> so I had to go see her. And, I, and sure enough, I, it was the real deal. She's like, it's happening. You get to go. And I said, I'm not leaving without a note that says I get drugs. So I was, I was not a of sound mind. Um, probably a, uh, the right thing would have been a prescription. Um, I had a note. It was written on a piece of paper. Now, I had this note. Now, it, you, I showed up, and the gray-haired, 73-year-old pink coat volunteer, you know those ladies? That's who was wheeling me up to the floor. And I'm screaming in her face, I have a note! I want drugs! That's nice, honey. Is this your first baby? You know, really. And everybody I would see, I, I had this note. That note today is still in my daughter's baby book, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, we laughed and reminisced. And, and all of a sudden, it hit me. I said, what are you doing on a Wednesday at a women in business conference when you're a busy OBGYN? What are you doing here? She said, well, funny you should ask. Because uh, <laughs> you know, I um, have been thinking about becoming a speaker. I've been thinking about speaking as part of my practice on women's health issues. Can we say hot flash? You know, things like that. That's the kind of stuff I wanted to start talking about. And so I looked at this brochure, and I thought, maybe I, I would go with the intention of trying to meet some of the speakers that might be at this, maybe make a connection, and just see what it would take for me to start adding professional speaking, because I have so much to say about women's health issues. Now, one chair open in the ballroom. I'm the past president of the National Speakers Association. I mentor new speakers. What do you think the chances are that I can help her? <laughs> How that happened was Diane had an intention. She woke up that morning. Matter of fact, she said her alarm went off. At a, it was actually yeah Wednesday morning at 6 AM. And she thought, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I doing this again? How many of you had that same thought <laughs> at 6 AM? Why am I doing this again? And she thought, when she woke up, she thought, what is my intention for what I want to have happen? She put it out there. She fired it up, fired up in the satellite dish. Divine intervention stepped in, whatever you want to believe. But I believe that. And I sit next to her. Sarah Michelle is an international speaker who works with organizations and associations, creating behavioral changes by teaching people how to intentionally connect with anyone, anywhere, anytime through her Perfecting Connecting keynote and training programs. And there's the Waco call people, the people that you live, in your, live with, uh, the people in your neighborhood, the people you work with and your team are probably not going to provide the resources that you need at the time you needed them. It's going to be the people that they know. It's not who you know, it's who they know that makes the difference. That's the strength of weak ties. That's where the world starts to get really small. And we don't allow ourselves to experience that if we don't reach out and ask. But it does take that stepping into the abyss, following the energy of yes, and it does take a conscious effort to build that network and looking for ways to bring value to people around you.
Sarah is an expert on the art of connecting and the author of Perfecting Connecting, a guide to mastering networking in the workplace, and the national audio program, Learning to Speak the Language of Others. Her articles and inspirational stories have appeared in numerous books, newspapers, and journals. No, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I really envied stay-at-home moms. I really did. Who, I, who do the hardest job in the whole world, staying home and raising kids. I mean, I just, like, I bow down. I just bow down at that. It's so amazing. I, I really thought I should try to do that. So I left my job that I loved and where I was really good at, and I, I did this. I stayed home. And about three months into this um, self-imposed lockdown, I was, um, I was, I decided that my daughter was coming home with a little friend from a play date. She was in kindergarten. My oldest daughter, Taylor, was in kindergarten. She was five. And her little friend, Katie, was coming over. And I decided if I was really going to be a stay-at-home mom, one of those really good moms, I needed to make homemade chocolate chip cookies. Now, you already know I don't cook. But I, uh, I went to the store with my little three-month-old um, before the girls came over from school. And I bought everything you need to make homemade chocolate chip cookies. And it was just like, you know, um, just a setting out of a book. You know, Matt Taylor's at this little picnic table I had in the kitchen with her little friend. They're coloring. And I'm, I'm a, I, I ripped off the plastic, off the, uh, the you know, the roll. And I'm, <laughs> I'm slicing and baking and making sure those, like, homemade chocolate chip cookies, right? And I'm slicing them. And, you know, it's just like Norma Rockwell. And I, and I overhear Katie say to Taylor, um, does your mommy work? No? Does your mommy work? Yeah, my, my mommy works. We have a nanny. Do you have a nanny? I'm thinking, this, here it comes. On the mouth of my babe, I'm going to hear her say, my mommy doesn't work because she loves me and my sister so much. She quit her job. She left everybody she loves. She was getting paid all this money. She doesn't make any money anymore because she only cares about my sister and I. And we are going to grow up to be perfect, confident, wonderful, contributing adults because my mom sacrificed everything she loved. <laughs> I was waiting for this. And instead, out of the mouth of my babe, I heard, no, my mommy doesn't work. Katie said, why? Because she doesn't have anything else to do. <laughs> If you're looking for a keynote speaker who can kick your conference off on the right note, you want Sarah Michelle. For more information, contact the person who shared this DVD with you.